Start us off, Carter. Uh, hi there. I'm Jared Zabransky. Are you familiar with Jared Zabransky, kid? Am, am I the kid, or is this one of those bits where you talk to yourself? Um, You're the kid. I just walked in here. Uh, no, no, Jared Zabransky. Who are you? I played quarterback for Boise State, famously defeating the Oklahoma Sooners in the 2007 Fiesta Bowl. I was an undrafted free agent with the Houston Texans, briefly played for the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Edmonton Eskimos, before retiring to a life of entrepreneurship. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, just got a notification in the middle of that that Java needs to be updated, but continue, Jared Zabransky. Yes, uh, I'm here to talk quarterbacks. As a former quarterback of minor note, I figured it would be a great time for me to come in with all my takes and all my beliefs on quarterbacking, on life, on... Oh, what the... F get the fuck out of my... Get the fuck out of my house. What the... God damn it. Kevin, you gotta warn me if people just sit at my chair. I touch my mic. We're not... You. Uh, we're not... I, th I thought I was talking to you. My bad. He, um, if he okay, has I'm access to your, can... if he has access to your computer, I feel like I, there's no way I can contact you. I mean, how yeah, able are you to see smoke signals? Um, my vision's bad, but it's it's probably doable. Um, oh god damn it! He stole my social security number. That's. You know what? That's, that that's that might have been me. You just deal with when it becomes a problem. Um, Th that might have been me. Um, oh no, no, I gave it to you. That was yeah. Hypothetically, yeah. what is your mother's maiden name? I'm just asking for a friend. Uh, I, I know how to say it. I sure as fuck can't spell it for you. Well, welcome to the world of being me. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to Carter and Kevin explain quarterbacks. Carter here, and I'm Kevin of the Kevin and Carter combination. Wow, that was yes. great alliteration. And rhyming. Oh yeah, I'm on fire right now. Um, yeah, you're 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 on a heat check. We I gotta, gotta we gotta keep the momentum up. I got I, I got a and full belly. I got a full belly. So yeah. Um, and for this episode, we are going to cover the last round of teams and talk about their quarterback situation and their general vibes going into the 2023 NFL Draft. Which first round starts later tonight, as of release. Mm. Oh, yes, I was about to say, less than 24 hours from now, we will be watching, and within 24 hours, you will be listening. Yep. Uh, be All right, who are we starting with? I'll be streaming later tonight to talk, give live reactions, and stream Pokemon games. Just throwing that out there. And I'll there. chime in when the quarterback desperate teams inevitably do something stupid. I'm looking at you, Houston. Uh, <laughs> hmm. All right. The New York Giants, or the New York Football Giants, with their man, Again? Danny Dimes. Danny, fuck. I, I have a lot. I, well, I don't have that many thoughts about this team. My thoughts are actually very concise. Um, the, despite their ability to make a potato salad out of a pile of leaves on the football field, <laughs> taking literal practice string wide receivers and making a competent mo movable offense, mm -hmm. their off the field decisions are stupid. So they had an option to take Daniel Jones fifth year, like because he was a first round quarterback, you can opt into getting an extra fifth year on their rookie deal, which is super affordable. And that's why teams will reach for quarterbacks in the first round, because having that extra year is good. super cheap. It, yes, it's basically the meta. They didn't do that for Daniel Jones, assuming he would play terrible this year, and that would give them an excuse to dump him off and move on to their next quarterback. However. To the point where it really, yes, to the point where it really felt like Brian Dable was actively trying to get him knocked out of games. The amount he was like running and gunning and playing uh, was genuinely surprising. Um, like he was getting hit a lot in those games. Mm -hmm. Um. But because he did just well enough to get them in the playoffs and get them a playoff win, they're stuck. And they had to sign him to a big contract at the expense of franchise tagging Saquon Barkley, the actual face of the franchise. And now he is alienated and pissed off, apparently. Uh, I Yeah, I was. I knew he was very angry about it. And He's threatening to not come to camp. Yeah. So that's a... 
That's just an interesting situation. I will say, though, as it was a quality opening year for DeBall. Right? Oh, yes. Um, we Bills fans actually owe him an apology. We constantly got on his case about, like, we constantly got on his case about, like, oh, you're getting too cute. Just run basic plays. And it's like, no, no, no. It turns out he was doing what he had to to get the most out of people like Isaiah McKenzie and Gabriel Davis. In mm -hmm. reality, we had a dearth of talent, and he was turning, you know, and he took a supernova in Josh Allen and made everyone else better by extension. Um, and that is exactly what he did in the Giants, probably to the detriment of their future because now they're stuck with Daniel Jones for a little while. Yeah. He's he's going to be on that team for a hot minute. Yeah, it's it's not the worst contract in the world, but it's not a great one. I don't... And it is... All right, continue. Uh, well, I was going to say, it, it like, uh, Giants fans have tried to explain, like, oh, there's ways out of it. There's, like, roundabouts and, like, different things they can do to sort of, like, mitigate the actual cost of it. But at the same time, it's, like... You could have just avoided the situation if you just took the fifth-year option. You know, the point of drafting a quarterback that early. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think... I don't think they're in a completely screwed-up spot quarterback-wise. I think... Right, right. I think Daniel Jones is good enough to, to maintain like a quality level of quarterbacking mm -hmm. I, I i put him in the uh, i forget what we made the tiers for in the previous one but it's like there's like there's the joe schmoes and then there's the above average and i would put him in that like little that little gray area between the the above average but like like right. clearly above Josh Mose, but I wouldn't quite say the he's the Derek Carrs and the Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, he's like he might be a step below them, but not a full I was gonna step. say he's a step above those guys, like where he's like he's good enough, he can he can lead the team. I think though they need to build the team a little bit more focused on him. How like you said, like they were it seemed like they were trying to just get like have him sandbag and get rid of him. And yeah. I feel like that hurt him. Mm -hmm. essentially i think the difference i think the difference between him and jimmy grapple and Derek carr is he is capable of surprises he does have a surprising amount of athleticism that opens up a whole like subsection like a whole like sub pocket of your offense that yeah. wouldn't be there if you had a less athletic guy mm -hmm. and for for me it's just like i don't know it's nice to not be in that quarterback purgatory where you settle for a daniel jones because it's like most Giants yeah. fans I know are okay with this just on the grounds of we were so bad for so long. Those last couple of Eli years were mm -hmm. pretty dire. Yeah, there was something. To just be, yeah, just to get off the mat and look competent is worth its weight in gold. In this case, $40 million for Daniel Jones. Yeah. I fully agree. I fully think that they overpaid for him. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I don't think they're in a super bad position like some other teams that we will probably mention later today right um, of the quarterback desperate moves this is one of the light least desperate because at least you now have a proof of concept that you can make the playoffs with not that much talent yeah outside of saquon barkley you didn't have a lot to work with no they didn't um but so speaking, it's speaking of which yeah oh, that's sorry, just, i would say no i was gonna pretty much agree where it's like they didn't have much going for him so they need they need to make some offensive moves for Dan, good old Danny Dimes, especially if they're not right. gonna retain Saquon because he's still like surely mm -hmm. franchised him, but nothing signed. I think you just gotta pay him. Like, look, I here's my sizzling hot take about the whole thing: running backs are now underrated, especially when they're like a face of the franchise kind of guy. And everyone got on their case for drafting him in that year with, like, Baker Mayfield and Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. My take is that was still the right pick because it's like, okay, Bar Baker Mayfield had already been picked. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to draft Sam Darnold, who isn't very good, or you can draft Josh Rosen, who is basically out of the league. I don't believe at that point pre-Brian Dable they had what it took to develop Josh Allen and – no one believed in Lamar Jackson to the point that the Ravens drafted him with their second first round pick. Yeah. He's literally the last pick in the first round, again, for contract reasons. 
Mm -hmm. Like, who else? Like, when a generational physical talent is there and you're in the top five, just take the generational talent. Like, again, it just, I don't know. Maybe I'm oversimplifying it. Maybe I should listen to the analytics guys. But I'm just like, get the guys who are good at ball. And when the inevitably get Bajan Robinson at like pick 10, they're going to be geniuses. Uh, I'm so excited for that 10th pick, but we'll talk about that in a hot minute. All right. right. So let's, let's just, cause it's, it's later tonight. Mm. What do you think the giants need the most outside of, outside of Saquon? Um, what do you think see. would be the, let's just, let's just stick first round. Like, and we're gonna keep it relatively vague, and just go with position. First round, they get one pick. Who do you think they can take that helps improve their team? Like, what position do you think they should fill? They need to get a wide receiver. Like, their wide receiver core is just—it's just not good enough. Like, I can agree it's good with that. In a scrappy, let's draw plays in the sand way, but not in a we need to win consistently way. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say. By their rep- Isaiah Hodgins, sleeper pick in the fantasy league last year. I demand to know who we kept that caused Isaiah Hodgins to get moved from Buffalo to the Giants. I want to know what specific player was deemed more important that we didn't keep that guy when we had to bring back Cole Beasley from (laughs) literal nowhere's land just to help Josh Allen out a little bit. I demand a tribunal on that individual player to decide whether or not they're allowed to be in the NFL anymore. Um, yes, they're in a weird spot because they're picking around 20, and it feels like 25 that area to be specific. Have, yes, they feel like they're on the back end of where a big run on wide receivers is going to be. And I'm really curious, and like because they have they have a dearth of talent at wide receiver, even if you get someone like Zay Flowers who is physically similar to a lot of the guys you already have, it might just be worth taking for the sheer like just get talent in the room and then figure out who plays where later. Yeah. No, I I can agree to that. Except I would, I would say go to tight end over receiver because there's some like pretty solid receivers. Um, mm-hmm. If they get Saquon uh, to stay, they're not gonna have to worry about running back. Pretty much, it's just gonna be the Saquon Barkley show. But tight end, they don't really have anyone in my opinion that's like a star. And I feel like having that yeah. tight end of blocking threat versus catching threat, like that in-between position that tight ends are, I feel like you can go really well. Yeah. I will say I probably agree with you on that, especially because this year's tight end class is arguably better than the wide receiver class, or at least at the top. Like, You know, obviously there's more wide receivers overall who are good options, but, like, a Michael Mayer from Notre Dame or, like, a Dalton Kincaid, like, if you can get one of those guys, just make the choice. Don't hesitate. Like, tight ends tend to take longer to develop than wide receivers, but, like, it'll, again, it'll be a high-value pick for where you're drafting. Yeah, and defense-wise and special teams-wise, I don't think the Giants have that many worries. Yeah, their defense is getting the job done, and it has enough young talent that mm-hmm. you can assume it's going to keep improving. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking at, when you say assume to keep improving, I'm looking exclusively at Kayvon Thibodeau. Yes. he. I Honestly, he probably should have been the number one overall pick, but, um, you know, I, I, he, he, I, like, I, everything I saw from him, I'm like, he's a new superstar. He's... He's gonna. I think he's. I think he's going to be on the same level as like those big name uh, defenders, kind of like uh, Micah Parsons. As much as I hate to say his name, Dexter Lawrence, or like Darius Big Play Slay. He's got that. He seems to. I'm sorry. I highlighted over Dexter Lawrence's uh, Wikipedia because that's what I used to use the rosters, and it says Dexter Lawrence to the second, nicknamed Sexy Dexy. So I need a sign of that. Oh, absolutely. But you got to fill in a little. You got to actually want Daniel Jones this upcoming season for the Giants. Right. It's their bet. Like, yeah. At this point, you're locked in. You have to at least build around him for two years. And Mm -hmm. if it doesn't work out after those two years, 
again, and we'll talk about another NFC East team in a little bit. We're going to talk about the (laughs) the rest of the NFC East except for the Cowboys this episode. Oh, really? Yeah, shoot, they're all in this. Yes, it, it it like again, certain NFC East teams have proven that you can get off a bad quarterback contract if you just find a team who's desperate enough. Mm-hmm. Speaking of desperate teams, it's all about the <sighs> Jets, baby. Who even go here go here even less than the New York Giants. You're in New Jersey, you fraudsters. Okay. Do you just want me to get my rants out of the way on this? All right, hit me with it. Let's go. This was one of the sweatiest, most desperate moves I have ever seen from an NFL team. The amount they paid, especially looking over the actual amount they paid, with the minimal qualifier, like, especially, like, the qualifiers they have on whether or not picks will be, like, second or first-round picks, is comical for a man who is 40. Again, there are so few quarterbacks who have actually played at this age. And maybe Tom, it really looks like Tom Brady was just the outlier because every other guy who's played this long looked like they had a spaghetti arm. <laughs> you're, you're basically betting the farm on this idea that he is going to be another outlier, that he is going to actually, you know, take care of himself and be good for at least two to three years, which I'm like, in what universe does he strike you as a guy who does that? The guy who talks about getting high all the time. Yeah, of course, he's Mm -hmm. really, like, repping it out. On top of the fact that you did not need to sell out this much. Again, it is a cost value thing. Derek Carr would have cost you way less. Jimmy Mm -hmm. Garoppolo would have cost you way less. And again, maybe that's me saying Jimmy G deserves to live in New York. That would just be good for football as an ecosystem. It would be good for our soul as a nation. Like, but that, like, you, you, you saw people paying a dollar for an ice cream. You handed them a 20 and got the same amount of ice cream, basically. Mm -hmm. Maybe more ice cream, but it's really hard to tell. On top of the fact, it's like, I, I, again, I just, You have to at least pretend you're interested in Lamar Jackson. You have to at least pretend so you make the Packers panic. Because the Packers were in the desperate position of needing to trade this guy. Like, they needed to get rid of Aaron Rodgers. And you, like, basically let them hold you over a barrel. I will say, like, they... I don't know know if they're the ones that got shafted in the deal. Because if you look, like, the, the Jets were missing a decent quarterback it doesn't have to be an elite quarterback they're just missing a decent quarterback and zach wilson is not that guy aaron Rodgers, obviously aaron Rodgers might not also might not also be that guy however he can back up what he's done unlike zach wilson now Rodgers might not be have ever been the best quarterback of any season that he's played. However, he still has gotten results. And if you look at the rest of the team, the the Jets are hovered around uh, Los Angeles Rams territory, where it seems like they might just be going all in for something big. Because I just, they got, I just don't believe it. I don't, they got a bunch of young kids that did are fantastic, like Sauce Gardner. Mm-hmm. Kids quality. And they're picking up okay. people like Alan Lazard, who already has a relationship with his quarterback. Now, do I think that Aaron Rodgers is going to exclusively throw to him? Very rarely possible. However, you already have that chemistry. And it's something I always say. Quarterbacks need chemistry with at least one other person that he could just throw it away, and it goes to. Jalen Hurts has A.J. Brown. Uh, what's his face? Patrick Mahomes has Travis Kelsey. Any uh, any, uh, any of the quarterbacks for the 49ers has uh, George Kittle. Right. There's, there's that chemistry. Okay. So, But, okay. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, so much of the like projection of the New York Jets is, well, if you just put a competent quarterback on this team, 
we would have gone to the playoffs. But that is assuming they're going to have a straight line of projection. Defense is famously volatile. Their defense yeah. might not be a top five team. And on top of that, they were a team that could only beat the Bills once, that could only beat the Dolphins once, that could only, well, I actually, did they beat the Patriots only once? Like, even with all of that, like, they are competing in a division where all four teams had a reasonable chance to make the playoffs going into the last week. Like, yeah. they, like, and they were the fourth one, like, they were the odd duck out. Like, mm-hmm. the they would have had to leapfrog two other teams to get the wild card position. Yeah. I just don't believe this gets you over the hump, especially for a young team that really could have used those resources to continue building and instead spent on just a slightly better Mike White. Just get a little better oh, than man. Mike White. Who also isn't dying every time he gets hit if yeah no if they invested in mike white and protected his ass i feel like they would have been set mm-hmm. but i think i think the addition of rogers i'm not saying it's giving the same energy but i wouldn't be surprised if they pull a sturdy um playoff run off of it their schedule's not too their schedule's not that bad. Um, they got some hard teams with the NFC Beast and their own division. However, the only other threat that they have for the rest of the season outside of those two divisions is the Kansas City Chiefs. They got the Falcons, they got the Chargers, Texans, Raiders, Browns, Broncos, and we've talked about pretty much all those teams and how none of them are, I would say, up to par with um, some of the teams. And you got them. You got them, young kids, starting to lead the way. You got Hardman. You got Sauce Gardner, like I said, and you got a quality kicker of Zerloin. You own your kickers, man. Uh, I just, field goals win games, Carter. Say no more. Field goals win games. This was. This is a perfect team for Lamar Jackson to go to, but they can't get Lamar Jackson because they're still in denial about Zach Wilson because the GM. If the GM admits he fucked up on Zach Wilson, that means he has gotten uh, two top five picks and is fucked up both times with basically the same kind of quarterback. Oh, the slightly athletic, sw- crappy white guy with a little bit of swag who that, throws a lot of interceptions but yeah. makes up for it with moxie and crazy off like kilter plays. No, those. How do you do that twice? Those picks are bad. How, however, my arguments, in my opinion, still stands of. They're building something right now. And I feel like well like while well, I said Aaron Rodgers not, might not be the guy, he's not the wrong guy in this situation. I mean I don't know. I just I get it. I had some dark days with the Bills, but you gotta you can't be that desperate to make the playoffs for the first time in a while. You you, yeah. you just can't. And I made it with Tyrod freaking Taylor, man. Yeah, that's true. But I, I've got a good feeling about this. It's not my. It's not going to be. It's not going to be my sleeper team of the season. But I'm. I'm thinking they. They pose a serious threat. And who knows? Aaron Rodgers might go into the darkness, and then a plot twist. They trade up and lose a couple more draft picks, and they're the ones that pr- pick Bryce Young or something absurd like that. Honestly, they are a team that actually makes sense for Bryce Young because, you know... What a wild card pick that would have like been, the though. next three or four years. Yeah. That would have been funny. The... Just, hey, boss, I know, like... I will say, like, you watch the Jets fuck up two top five quarterback picks, and you're like, is there a method to the madness of the Indianapolis Colts GM being like... Who basically straight up said, one of the reasons I haven't picked a quarterback is because if I got it wrong, I'd be fired. And I'm like, oh, my God, he admitted it, ladies and gentlemen. At least he admits it, yeah. Like, yeah. Is there a method to his madness of being like, no, no, see, I'm a good GM. See, I picked up this great uh, interior lineman. I picked up this great running back. I picked up these decent receivers. Like, you know, it's really hard to be like, hey, boss, I know I fucked up the most important position uh, on the field twice, but can you give me one more chance? Yeah, I, I I have faith to see how they go. Speaking of having faith, it's all about the birds, baby. Your like Philadelphia Frodo, like, Eagles. Like Frodo looking up into the skies of Mount Doom after the dark task was done, believing that he was going to have to die to save the world, he looked up and in the light he saw amazing creatures and he said, 
Go birds. Let's go. Uh, Jalen Hurts. What can we say about them that hasn't even said? Oh, yeah, no. Jalen Hurts had a lot of doubters. I, I won't deny it, but before this point last year, instead of saying he is him, I was saying, you know, maybe we should have kept Nick Foles. Um, <laughs> I'm a big Nick Foles guy. I, mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love the man. I was in the same place. I was like... I was like, good, good. You have two first round picks for the next draft, and Lamar Jackson will look great in Eagle Green. Or, you know, you can get CJ Stroud if you want. Yeah. But now. But they got Jalen Hurts, and he proved himself. He is him. Truly. Like, that's the thing. It'd be one thing if it was like, you know, he played all right during the Super Bowl, but he wasn't. It was the wide receivers and the running backs. It's like, no, he was making throws. He was having to make like, yeah. very difficult in movement on a dime plays to keep that team in the game. It, it was, was a, all on his back, and he didn't waver. As much as I hate the result of that game, I loved it. It was a quality football game. The last two minutes were a little scummy, but up until then... It was a quality football game. Hands down. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, they, like, again, this is a perfect guy to give that much money. One, because he's great for the environment. Like, he's a, like a net positive for the city of Philadelphia and its team. It's And also... It's got Ted Lasso energy, honestly. It's, it's a little bit because I also just watched Ted Lasso before recording this. But right. it's got, like... He's the guy who stepped up, and he's not he's not backing down with BS excuses. If if something's not his fault, he makes it his fault. And he's a locker room leader. Is, he's not Zach truly Wilson. Cosmic how, it's truly cosmic how we went from Carson Wentz, the embodiment of bad vibes, who has been rushed out of town multiple times now, yes. to Jalen Hurts, a guy who everyone loves. Like, he... He had this, like, he's one of the, if we recorded this last year, I would have probably said, this is Hurts' season to prove himself or get out. And he absolutely mm-hmm. proved himself. And he's got, yes. he's got nothing but weapons on him. And I'd like to call mention that once Minshew left the team, I predicted that they were going to. Um, out of all the free agents, I said the right answer was going to be Marcus Mariota to be Jalen Hurts' backup. And look who his backup is, Marcus Mariota. Yeah, it's like, he's a good, I, I again, as a Kyle Pitts fantasy owner, I was furious at Marcus Mariota. Like, I don't think he's got it anymore. But he is a good backup in the sense of, like, he is just similar mm-hmm. enough to your starting quarterback in terms of, like, play style and general vibes that... You know, if it's a short-term injury, you will stay afloat and you'll stay competitive. If it's a long-term injury, it's like, well, see, we're not tanking. We're not throwing yeah. the season away. We're just we're fighting to the like, end, trying as yeah. hard. Um, but yeah, and like, look, the Eagles' window is the next like three to four years. So giving Hurts that money makes a hundred percent sense because yeah. it's going to like because it lets you at the end of this like at the end of this four-year window say, okay, what is the path forward? Like, it is a low-risk, high... Despite the amount of money he got, it is weirdly low-risk, high-reward thing. Yes. Because you can trust him to stay consistent. You can trust that we'll be able to keep the core of this team around for the entirety of the contract. And then at the end of the contract, like, you're going to have room to breathe and quickly reassemble something else. If nothing else, Howie Roseman's proved he can turn a disaster zone into a quick rebuild. Mm -hmm. So, like, this kind of lined up perfectly. Yeah, no, this, like... Compared to the Eagles in, what was it, the 2020 season where they had, like, four wins, um, that, like, that Eagles versus this Eagles are two completely different teams. Excuse me. And they have arguably one of the hardest uh, schedules next season. They've got... Oh, God. The NFC Beast twice, the Mm -hmm. AFC North... Which, by the way, I'm still thinking we should go to that Bills Eagles game at the link, and then oh, the other God. oddball teams thrown in there, um, outside of those divisions are the 49ers, the Vikings, the Chiefs, like all terrifying team. Well, two terrifying teams in the Vikings. 
Um, yeah, they, uh, yeah, they, uh, they did not hesitate to uh, challenge the Eagles after successful, uh, after their after, big successful season. Yeah, and honestly, I am all for it. I want like. Last year, anybody who opposed was like, oh, the Eagles like just had an easy season. The Eagles did this. They just happened to stumble upon big wins against teams that you can argue did terrible. But they weren't overall bad teams. Right. So it's like, um, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting season. And now that there's, there's certain people that have been kept the majority of the offensive line hurts Cox. It's going to be a good, it's going to be a good team. Plus they're hungry. Right. Right. Yeah. And yeah, they're in, and they're in a position to grow, which I guess kind of leads us to what are we thinking for their draft position? Because they do have two picks. They have two first first rounds. Yeah. And a part of me wonders Maybe for that second pick, unless there's someone really interesting you want, because this is a kind of thin draft class, as a lot of people have said. There are a handful of blue chip guys, and then the rest is kind of whatever high upside, low floor um, guys. It might be worth, again, just paying it forward and pushing that pick to another year. Because the last couple years of having two first round picks has paid dividends in terms of like getting what we need. However, it's there's not much that we need. And there's not a lot of there's not a lot of talent. Like right. like I said, the after the first after the se- first half of the second round, it's gonna just be getting into guys that are like, who? Who is this guy? Right. Who is this guy? Yeah. Which is why it's like, look, again, there are a handful of blue chip I know Jalen Carter has some character issues. Yeah. And I know Bijan Robinson's a running back, but if one of them falls to you, don't blink. That is a huge value at pick 10. Huge. And yeah, I'm yeah. especially into Bijan Robinson because it's like, as someone on the Fanatic pointed out, like, you know, we keep drafting linemen, and that's good, that's fine, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, but we're so stable that the guys who we already have are going to keep playing. We can't keep drafting first-rounders to sit on the bench for three years. Yeah. Like, we need to get more, like, immediate right-now guys while there's an opportunity to get them. Yeah, no, uh, I think... I think if they are both available, my my brain goes. You want to take Bijan over Carter for a couple I agree. a couple of reasons. Um, the biggest the biggest reason is I've heard through the rumor mill that when they were both at Georgia, I think it was Jalen Carter, but uh, Jordan Davis looked after him. And made mm-hmm. sure he stayed, like on the right path, which shows great attitude of Jordan Davis. Won't deny that. Mm-hmm. However, that was also in college. This is in the big boy leagues with the big boy money. So right, it's like, right. do you really need to have him babysitting your number ten pick, like having one of your? picks arguably going to be a top starter this upcoming season possibly maybe right right that's Um, it you know what that is a fair point it's like as nice as it would be to have them on the team together again it's like you know john phillips wasn't playing three downs we need him to play more downs he kind of needs to focus on his own things right now yeah you know and like jordan davis he got he was on like the upswing of like here's how we go and then he got hurt and then we picked Linval Joseph and Nadamakan Su up and then his his need for being on the field at all like more kind of dropped and his amount of plays dropped but I still like the kid mm-hmm. and he's good oh yeah now that he's got his first injury out of the way I feel like it's going to be a lot different of a game I do wish that we could have kept um Isaac Sayamalu though a little bit for Tom a little bit just to keep that offensive mm-hmm. line solid but right. that's also kind of with the offensive line going to my argument a little bit of why Bijan makes more sense than uh, Carter. Because yeah. if you have, like, it was nonstop talk about 
the Eagles' offensive line this last season. And it annoyed me a little bit because they kept referring it to Jason Kelsey and the offensive line. And it wasn't until, like, late playoffs that they actually gave other people credit. Like, outside of Jason Kelsey. So, it's like, mm-hmm. and as much as I love the guy, it's like, come on, like, if Jordan Mulata makes a good block, acknowledge Jordan Mulata. Don't say, ah, Jason Kelsey of the offensive line, let his offensive line to good blocks this game. Right, right. Yeah, and it's, like, for me, the bigger stance is just, like, again, this window is four to five years with Jalen Hurts. Like, mm-hmm. that is the window we are on. So why not, like, because the problem people have with drafting a running back that high is this annoying analytics, like, well, you know, if you give them the amount of carries they're going to warrant, they won't last that long in the NFL. Well, as militant, as, like, mercenary and as, like, callous as it sounds, we don't really need him much past five years. Yeah. Like, again, like, as the last couple years in the NFL have shown, you win by just having a sheer amount of weapons and just, like, throwing them one after another at the defense. So why not do that? Mm -hmm. Why not have, at any given time, you can have one of the most dynamic running backs, like, akin to a, you know, Reggie Bush or Saquon Barkley to come out of the draft, and Jalen Hurts. Or he can just throw it to the two all-pro wide receivers you have. Yeah. And the all-pro tight end you have. Why not just say, there is literally no way you can stop us because we have thought of it. We have an option for everything. Absolutely. And... Honestly, like, you can't sleep on the Giant Slayer, Boston Scott, and Kenny G. Like, <laughs> they're they're not bad. They're not bad running backs. But I feel like adding... But they're also, like, on the smaller side, and Bijan's not that small of a guy. Right. So, you you get a bigger dude like Bijan Robinson and have have the offensive line open a hole for him, and I feel like you got some... You got a little bit of running game magic there. Right. And then, uh, honestly, shall we head to the other side? Also oh, for the third, uh, 30th pick, trade it for something in a future year. Yeah, again, keep this meta of having two first-round picks so if anything goes wrong, like, let's say you draft a guy mm-hmm. in front of Justin Jefferson who isn't as good as Justin Jefferson and has an attitude problem and no accountability and you have to get rid of him, and you need to trade up to make sure you get a better wide receiver to replace him within two years. Like weird hypotheticals like that. Yeah. yeah very that's a hypothetical. Situation. Very hypothetical. Not nothing like that ever happened. Yeah. It behooves you to have more than one first round pick, mm-hmm. um, which is how I think we should keep going, going forward yeah. if possible. And then in like, those, if you can keep that momentum up, why not? In those late rounds, just draft a different punter. God damn. <laughs> Of course, that fucking the workman's compman of the NFL, Kadarius Tony, who is always hurt with something, who has not played a full season of football since he was in high school. Um, and if you could get workman comp checks in college, he probably would have gotten them there too. Of course, it was going to be him. Of course, that's the only <laughs> way the story could end. And speaking of Isaac Sayamalu, the the, the the other side of PA, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I do not have a lot to say about this team. Other Neither than, do what I. are we doing? I don't know what they're going for. Yeah, it's like, look, pat on the back. Mike Tomlin still hasn't had a losing head coach. And it's like, you know, Kenny Pickett had his moments last year. Like, he was scrappy. He was a good leader. Mm-hmm. He was throwing it around. The Mitchell Trubisky of it all was really funny because I love he played for the Bills for one year. And it's like, oh, this is going to be his career real rehabilitation and then he's gonna gonna become a starter and become decent and immediately you're like oh my god he is actually very bad yeah um and got benched for the rookie and because again the problem is like hey in a year where no one's drafting first round quarterbacks why did you draft a first round quarterback just so you could go nine and eight for the a couple more years just so you can like be the wild card in a division that already has the ravens and Bengals. yeah Nah, it's. I don't. I don't like, know this what they're is the going dark side with. Of, yeah. Yeah. This is a dark side of financial or like franchise stability, where it's like, okay, well, we're never going to be terrible, but now we're just kind of going to be, maybe, competing for the playoffs every year. Yeah. No, I don't. They don't really have anyone, in my opinion, that's just like, like they got good picks. They got 
They got good hands on their team. It's just mm-hmm. a matter of how they execute it. And it's a little it's a little all over the place. Like they have a handful of guys I really like. Like George Pickens. Um Pickens I think is a good is, one. Yeah. Pittsburgh has a weird psycho- psychic ability to pick up the crazy wide receivers, and I mean both play style and personality wise. Um, yeah. I love Najee Harris, but they are driving that poor kid into the ground. He yeah. is already I was gonna, up. I would say he's years. getting he's been getting rocked the last couple of seasons. He's getting the Trent Richardson deal where it's like, hey, let's give you the ball three hundred times behind a crappy offensive line. That should work for mm-hmm. a little bit, right? And yeah. I'm like, I'm genuinely worried about how long he's And then, you know, their defense is always gonna be good. They have like Again, sometimes institutional stability, like institutional stability works really well for defense where it's like you can swap people in and out. You can, you know, as long as you have yeah. one or two blue chip guys like Mika Fitzpatrick, you're going to make it work. Um, but other than that, it's like, all right, but how are we getting better? How are we like there's there's very little sea light left, I feel yeah. like, for this team unless they do something crazy and like really spend money to get some kind like. If they did an AJ Brown level trade, I'd be like, okay, now that's we're now I would say that's a move. Up. I think, but that's not their style. No, I think the biggest thing that the Steelers can walk away with is a star. They need they need somebody from their team that is the household household name of their team. You know, like how everyone knows. Yeah. Like typically, there's at least everyone that knows one player from a different. From the team, yeah. Like when and specifically, he has to be on offense. Like yeah, it can't be one of the Watt kids or Fitzpatrick. Like, you know, maybe Pickens is capable of that, but you know, I don't believe Pickett is. And Najee, like, is kind of in a weird limbo state, so I don't know about him either. Yeah, if he, I would say, if he, he just needs a little help. But like, you had like Big Ben and stuff, where it's like these are big names. Um. And their their season honestly looks like the most average season on the planet. They've got they've got their own division, which is the Ravens, Bengals, and Browns. So Ravens games could go either way. Bengals games are probably mm-hmm. losses. Browns games are probably wins. Yeah, their biggest advantage going forward is that they play their division really well. Yeah, so they'll at least always have a chance to squeak into the playoffs. Yeah, and then there's like. They got, like, Cardinals, Colts, Texans, but they also got, like, 49ers, Jaguars, Seahawks, where it's, like, this schedule can go just so either way for them. Mm-hmm. And it's – I'd I'd be bold enough to th- think, as of right now, I could predict their games. But that's, right. like – it just seems average. Like, if we had to rank all the 32 teams – I'd put them at number 16 or 17 or whatever the heck is the more middle point and just be like, this, this is the bar. You're either better than the Steelers or you're worse than the Steelers. Right. And that is how they designed the team. And it seems like they're content to be that going forward. But again, as someone who watched his football team go seven to nine for like seven straight years, it's not a fun place to be. Like patience really runs out really fast for that. Yeah, they just need. They need something big. They need a name. Yeah. Speaking but unfortunately, of, unfortunately, they don't spend money on that. Yeah, speaking of teams with names, the San Francisco Forty ers This is another team that just really makes me angry. Honestly, I think this like first off this last season. Shout out to Brock Purdy for being an absolute unit. The He's Brock Purdy is upon us. Uh, honestly, the kid sold me on him, and he's got he's got that Lovey Smith energy. Like he might not have he might he was Mister Irrelevant, but he took that and two big injuries to the other quarterbacks on his team later, and the dude is leading the team until he gets injured in the NFC conference. Can I start with that? Can I just get my two cents out about that? Hit me with it. So 
here's what pisses me off specifically about. So at the owners' meetings, they tried to push a rule in that it requires you to have three quarterbacks on your roster in the playoffs. Correct. And it reminded me of when the Bills proposed changes to the playoff overtime rules because of that uh, Chiefs game. And everyone clowned on them. That annoying long-haired guy from Undisputed or what? Not Undisputed. Whatever, whatever, Collins, you know, Collinsworth show is. Um, oh Nick, yeah. Nick right or something. That putz. He was like, "Well, you don't have to worry about overtime now after we lost to the Bengals." That rule objectively made it more fair for everyone. The quarterback thing. You could always have three quarterbacks on your team. Like again, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry that you got a bad end of the deal in the playoffs, but it's like, how do you not look around at your weird, fucked up team mm -hmm. with a fucked up history at quarterback and say, hey, why don't we just hedge our bets? Maybe we don't need a ninth defensive back who guts it out on special teams this weekend. Yeah. Especially after months of the, like, kind of arbitrary but generally necessary and well-meaning concussion rules where a independent adjudicator can just arbitrarily pull your quarterback out of the game. Mm -hmm. Like... You can call it an overcorrection for what happened to Tua, but it's a reasonable overcorrection given how egregious that was. But it's like, yeah, in a lead, in a scenario where you can just have a quarterback done for the day on like because they hit the ground weird, like how were you not more prepared for that? Yeah, no, that lack of preparedness. You have no one to blame for yourself. But <laughs> for me, what drives me insane is like I I hate to like haul this one, but like Trey Lan the whole Trey Lance drama just drives me insane. Like, mm -hmm. I am not a believer in Brock Purdy because we've seen this song and dance before. The scrappy, small guy who, like, plays out of his means with a lot of talent around him. This was Baker Mayfield. We've seen this before. Like, <laughs> yeah. he, on top of the fact that he might not be able to throw a ball anymore. So, like, True. because uh, apparently the injury is way worse than they thought it was. It's, um, yeah, it's a rough run. So, it's basically the ACL of the arm. Yes. UCL. It's like a literal baseball injury that might not be treatable mm -hmm. in a football context. And yet you are going around saying he deserves to be the starter, while Trey Lance, who will be healthy at some point to start the season, is just sitting here like, what the fuck? Yeah. Again, how I just... Everyone calls Kyle Shanahan and Kyle Lynch these geniuses. They're so genius for this team they built. And yet they just overthink the fucking quarterback position so much. Again, the whole point of getting Trey Lance is because he's a ceiling raiser, because he's better than the Brock Purdy's and the Jimmy Garoppolo's of the world. Because, like, if you develop this guy, like you're supposed to, that's the thing. He doesn't, they don't want to develop anyone. And that's the part that they can't seem to get their head around. Mm -hmm. Like, they were like, oh, we actually have to work on this quarterback? Oh, that seems exhausting. Never mind that we traded mortgage the future as a team on him. Here's, here's kind of what that, that last bit made me think when you're like, ah, oh, we don't have to develop quarterbacks. If you look at the build of the rest of the offense, you're kind of in a right spot with that comment. Think think about their running backs. Think about their receivers. Think about their freaking tight end golden retriever. Um, mm. It's like they have, they have weapons. They are the number one team where I feel like they can put in any, and they proved it, they can put in any quarterback and get wins. Yes, but it's like, if you just took the time to develop this one specific guy, your ceiling would be so much higher. It's like you saw him for less than a game, and your brain just got fried yeah. because the cult of Brock Purdy has taken over the masses. Oh, yeah. Like, if I was their, again, if I was their owner, especially on top of, like, you're talking about bringing in Tom Brady, what? If I was yeah. the owner, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing with my money? Like, what? Did, no, stop. You're, you're making Trey Lance work, or maybe you're not the genius everyone's made you have to be. This is ridiculous, guys. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? I will say, though, they marketed Brock Purdy correctly. Everyone loves a good underdog. That is, like, that's the modern-day American dream. That's your Rey Mysterio going for the longest uh, Royal Rumble appearance in 2005. You want that, oh, you want that underdog, and this kid took that underdog spot, and you're you're only marketing about the underdog, Brock Purdy. You're not marketing quality tight, like arguably the best tight end in the league, George Kittle, or Christian McCaffrey, probably the best running back in the league. 
You're focused on or Brock. Or offense, Debo Samuel. Correct. Debo Samuel, too. Um, and I think that's why I get so pissed off. All of these people deserve better than a like above average quarterback. They deserve someone who's a ceiling raiser. They like, do. They do Brent deserve Lane's that. They win a Super Bowl. Why not go for that? Like when you bring a Jimmy Garoppolo to the Super Bowl, you're you know you're flipping a coin and everyone's holding their breath. If you bring a Trey Lance to the Super Bowl, who's developed and ready to go, you're probably winning that Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Which is my stance on the matter. And I just, like, I, I can't endorse recklessly trading away that many picks and then giving up on the guy after two years. I just cannot endorse that level of chicanery and nonsense from a, like, a coach and GM who have never won a Super Bowl. Yeah. Speaking of chicanery and nonsense, the Seattle Seahawks. Now, this is one of my teams. I love these guys. Yeah. Geno Smith fought against the chicanery and shenanigans or whatever you said of the the Broncos and is now on the Seahawks and I'm a little scared of the Seahawks this season not gonna lie yeah I just it's hard not to like Geno Smith a man who has really gotten screwed at every conceivable corner his rookie year uh, a defensive player on the Jets mm-hmm. decided to just punch him in the face and break his jaw crippling his development and setting him back years yep. and after like just being a journeyman in the nfl he finally gets his chance and is a he is a competent like methodical pocket passer who elevates the people around him i think i just described it to like callum during carter explains football is it's like it's nice not only to have him finally get his day in the sun but it's also nice to get a quarterback like that like traditionally Quarterbacks like black quarterbacks like this don't really get credit. The Donovan McNabs of like, you know, methodical pocket passers who like run the offense competently and make the plays they got to make and do just enough to get you the win. Like those, you know, usually that's saved for the Brock Purdy's of the world. Yeah. It's nice to see Geno Smith fi- find that niche and get rewarded for it and get a contract that is good, but not like overly taxing for where the Seahawks are right now. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, the Seahawks are at a very interesting spot. And, like, also, look at their running back situation from last season. They went down to Kenneth Walker starting, and that kid picked it up. What a great name, Kenneth. Like, Kenneth Walker you know, the you third. Know the running back going to be good when they have a cool name. Yeah, that, that's a like, solid yes, name. That guy, yeah, that guy is a, that guy is a super. That guy is a supernova. He was grossly underrated coming out of college. And, yeah, that's the thing. They kind of have all the pieces on offense already. Like, Locke mm-hmm. and Metcalf are getting older, but, then you know, y- you like to think their styles of play will hold on just long enough for you guys to have one or two chances at a title push. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they have a cacophony of running backs, and the offensive line is competent enough. Like really, most of their problems are just on defense. Their defense is a lot of was a lot of rookies playing outside their means, mm-hmm. and it's like, well, another year and more. Like, not having to pay as much for Geno Smith just gives them a chance to build a defense. Yeah. No, there's. Um, this is a solid team. Just get solid enhancement talent. Right, and honestly, like, trading. The Broncos collapsing and giving them the fifth pick is perfect because this is just a team that needs a little more star talent, particularly on defense. Yeah. Um, so they now have more bites at the apple. Like they are, like if Will Anderson falls because there's a rush on quarterbacks, or if you decide feel like you can handle Jalen Carter and like make sure he stays on the straight and narrow, mm-hmm. like that is a steal. That is highway robbery for this team. Or alternatively, because I do think Geno Smith will have a relatively reasonable enough ego about this. If you want to like, start mapping out the next 10 years of Seahawks teams and not just the next three, this would actually be a great place for Anthony Richardson or C.J. Stroud to go. Honestly, yeah. I'd argue C.J. Stroud is very similar to Geno Smith in terms of just like reliable, dependable, methodical yeah. passer. Probably a slightly elevated version of Geno Smith. And like, yeah. Wouldn't it be nice that they don't have to play their first year or maybe even their second year and you yeah. just let them let them see grow how football team works? I just want all yeah. of these quarterbacks to go to good teams. I'm tired yeah. of quarterbacks going to the Cleveland Browns and getting turned into wood chips. <laughs> like, yeah. I will say quarterbacks. Uh, number five pick, 
that's a great position to be in mm-hmm. for the Seahawks because it's the pick from Denver, and they could theoretically turn it into picking up someone good with star power. Mm-hmm. They can turn it into picking up someone that they'll have for a couple years, like at least one of the top, uh, like there's five to seven quarterbacks to be drafted four that i know are going to be drafted very early um yes and if some team gets desperate enough they will trade you the farm for yeah that pick. And, and then you have the next two or three years settled yeah like you can hey you can pick up one of those guys yourselves and just have them as a solid backup or you just use that draft pick for just more picks you got a relatively small team and that's a powerful um that is a powerful pick number cuz people like people are going to jockey for that spot if given the opportunity and then it's oh, all yeah. about it's all about what you can get out of that so honestly like i wouldn't be upset if th- that number 5 pick is just a trade pick you that's honestly i agree that's a solid pick and you can make a good deal a good deal or two with it Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm again. I don't have too much to say about the Seahawks other than good. The ship is clear. At some point, they need to come up with a succession plan for Pete Carroll because he's old as dirt. Yeah, but other than that, I they can don't agree have to a that. Lot of major questions. Yeah, they're not. They're not like some of the other teams where it's just like we're just sitting there going, "What are these people like Pittsburgh?" Where it's like, "What are they going to do to get out of mediocrity?" Or yeah, average, what is the plan averageness. To be better, and they're not the like. The plan to be better is very clear for the Seahawks. Yeah, the Seahawks. I think that number five book just wheel and deal with it, and that's just that's going to shape their team. Oh, absolutely. For the upcoming season. Speaking of a team that needs to be shaped, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, with uh, allegedly Baker Mayfield is their current starter. God, please! If they make if they make me watch Kyle Trask in professional NFL football, Trask games, is a villain from NFL... X Men. Just saying. <laughs> exactly. If they make me watch that like xenophobic robot maker, I swear to God, we are putting the entire NFC South, their whole stadiums, all their coaches, all their assistants, in a submarine and dropping it into the ocean. No, you cannot make me do that. And yeah. like. Ugh. What a what a mess of a team. Because again, they still have a lot of that Super Bowl talent. It's just all of that suit as James Winston proved, all of that Super Bowl talent was contingent on having a really, really good quarterback. And now they don't have a really, really good quarterback. As, but they still poured money into this team. As much as I don't like I d don't like Tom Brady, that gross individual. I won't deny arguably one of the best quarterbacks of all time him himself mm. sucks and it's hilarious he fell into a crypto scheme absolutely yes. hilarious and you want to know the real funny part of that he did that ad with giselle it is so obvious they were never in the same room when that was filming <laughs> even the handful of shots where i think they're both on frame it's very clear that they shot one side of the room like they did a wide shot had her one day had him the other day and then just digitally cut it down the middle oh, yeah. to stitch together a fake two shot and it's hilarious in context. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't – this is a team that I don't know what they do in the sense of, like, whereas Pittsburgh, I'm like, how do they elevate their ceiling? Yeah. I'm like, Pits- Tampa, how do you just get rid of all of this stuff so you can start a rebuild? Yeah, no. Like – We were Pitt- talking about this last year. P- Pittsburgh, it's, it was a – we don't know what you can do to improve yourself. Tampa is – we don't know what to do to make you a contender. Like right. ba- Baker or, Mayfield is your choice of starter. Yeah, he's I not terrible, again, but he's not amazing. He's he's in that average Joe club. Yeah, and it's like the talent on this team is not the kind of talent that elevates Baker Mayfield. Like Baker Mayfield needs a good running and two or three reliable receivers and a really strong offensive line, of which you really only have the receivers Mm -hmm. like this is not a team he elevates to greatness this is a team he barely survives on we saw this in cleveland yeah um and on top of that it's like again 
like this team was getting ready to enact like a teardown before Tom Brady announced he wanted to come out of retirement and then couldn't get them. They wouldn't let him go to the Dolphins. Yeah, so he had that, to stay whole, there. that whole and then you spiel. Just pull, and then you just ended up pouring more money into this team for one last ride. And one last ride came and went and it was a disaster. And you barely made the playoffs and were the most miserable playoff team I've ever seen. And now it's like, you just, again, this is a team that really just needs to take their medicine where it's like, you sold out, you got the ring. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I would argue, like, I kind of, again, I made the joke about Kyle Trask, but they probably should just start Kyle Trask. And like, because that'll sink the ship faster. Yeah. No, you got, uh, I was say. I've been this entire series. I've been making. Oh, this is going to be a sleeper pick team. Oh, this team's already elite, and they're going to be tender. This team's going to be as average as the Pittsburgh Steelers can be. I'm I'm looking to see, depending on what the uh, Houston Texans do, because they have potential to to build this upcoming off season. And depending on, like, depending on the Broncos in general, I could see, I could see as of right now, this Tampa Bay Buccaneers being just thrown into that bottom level of mediocrity. Oh yeah, they like, are one of my sleeper teams for having the first overall pick, yeah, or at least the top five pick. Yeah, they're gonna be, they're gonna be hanging out with the Texans, maybe the uh the broncos and the cardinals absolutely where it's just gonna be like if they play each other who do i care who's gonna lose morris is the question yeah the crap yourself for caleb bowl yeah where if that's the game on thursday that's a good one yeah um but it's like that's gonna be your this that's gonna be your uh they're on thursday night this sucks yeah poor al michaels is you know, looking like at the ground from his high up per- the day. Mm-hmm. It's the day. Yeah, I, 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 you know what? I've never liked Tampa. Something about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers has always annoyed me. And then the fact that they like slimed their way to a Super Bowl with Tom Brady just added to that. So I do. It was Tom Brady and Gronk because these- they had the chemistry that I keep talking about. I'm not yeah. wrong. The Freud. The Sean Freud of their team potentially falling apart does put a smile on my face. But, yeah, a it, it gross aesthetic, like, like, no disrespect to Tampa Bay, but, like, you know, we don't need three teams in Florida. Yeah. Like, just everything about them is incorrect. They're, yeah, they're, they're not, they're not going to be entertaining this upcoming season, in my opinion. Oh no! And that's gonna be just put put them at the bottom of your leaving leaderboards. You got talent with Mike Evans, but also he's got to get the ball somehow. Right. <laughs> and that um, um, and as of right now, they're not exactly at the position. My advice. Um, speaking of, I would uh, say my yes. advice for the Tampa Bay for this upcoming like draft and off season. Trade your high picks for just more picks and just pick scraps. Yeah. See see if you can I, see if you can make chicken out of chicken shit. Yes. Um that was one of my favorite comments from a recent podcast. Someone said that well, they picked said this for the Cardinals. What if you trade that third pick and everything else you have, like anyone who still has any legs, like DeAndre Hopkins, Campbell, whatever. And basically just scare everyone else out of trying to get the number one overall pick next year. Mm-hmm. Like just, just barricade the doors to the 2024 draft early, and Tampa Bay should be in that category too. Yeah, Tampa Bay should absolutely be in that category. All mm-hmm. right, let's second to last team, the Tennessee Titans with Ryan Tannehill. As of right now, I haven't heard otherwise. Yes, they are entertaining. They are more entertaining to me because it's mm-hmm. they're in some kind of weird culture war. Uh, where half the organization wants to start a tank and half the other team doesn't. And all of it stems from them trading A.J. Brown to Oh, the man. Eagles. What a hilarious, hilarious yes. like, pick. The year before was this nexus moment where they had the number one overall seed and everyone was kind of like, 
are they really that good? Are they really that good? The Bills should have had the number one overall seed, but Josh Allen slipped on a fourth and goal a play. Um, and they lose in the, their first game. And everyone's like, yep, they're frauds. And the GM clearly was like, okay, we've reached the ceiling of what we're going to do with Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry, but we paid them too much. Yeah. So we got to start dumping off players. They trade away A.J. Brown. And Mike the Rabel in the draft move. move. Truly, like, how did you not try to trade Derrick Henry instead? Poor Mike Rabel looks like his puppy had just been put down. Like, he looks so yeah. despondent that he had to get rid of his favoritist guy. And then they fired the GM halfway through the season. After they played is. the team that A.J. Brown got sent to. Yes. Clearly, Mike Rabel used this as a play to be, fuck you, you ruined my team. Um... The, my favorite part of all of this ties back to the quarterbacks because clearly Mike Vrabel does not want Malik Willis, who no. going into the draft, they were like, he's a sleeper top five guy. Like, you know, everyone wants mm -hmm. a quarterback. He's the guy with the upside. He's the Trey Lance type where it's like, if he gets the reps, he'll make it work. And they left that poor kid out to die. Like his numbers were terrible. Yeah. But when you actually watch the footage, they were trying to run what they run with Brian Tannehill. And it's like, they're two completely different players. Why are you not running like option? Why are you not running play action? Why are you trying to do this quick West Coast like step, step, throw, step, step, throw? He's not built for that. Mm -hmm. And it's very clear it's Mike Rabel's being a passive aggressive and trying to ruin this kid's career. Yeah. Um No. The and they have they have solid talent. They have Derrick Henry, one of the yes. top running backs. Inexplicably uh, still, even though like he is now reaching an unprecedented yeah. amount of carries. Yeah, they have Okonkwo at tight end, whose name first name I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce. Um, they've got they got so many like decent people. Honestly, don't sleep on yeah. Traylon Burks. Um, when he's not another hurt. guy who like Mike Rabel clearly does, didn't want to play because he's just angry. Yeah. Um, they they have potential. Honestly, I wouldn't. I'd be lo not super surprised if they pick up a quarterback first round. They really should, but again, I think I don't think they will. Rabel doesn't want to. I don't think they will, but I wouldn't be surprised. The Titans are getting into a dangerous territory where the coach is accumulating power. It's basically what happened with um, uh, what was his name? Brian. He was the former um. Houston Texans coach who also coached the Penn State. Uh, Ryan I know o who you mean, something. but I don't know who you mean. I'm I literally blanking on his last name. But yes. We'll call him he, Brian. Like, yeah, Brian. Like, you know, he got the GM fired and then he got to make personnel decisions. And that's when they traded to Andre Hopkins, picked the same year Stephon Diggs went for a first round pick and basically nuked that team. And that's like what started the death spiral of the Houston Texans where and I'm starting to think we're getting into the exact same place because it seems like Vrabel just has more and more power. And it's like, coaches do not make good GMs. They get too attached to players and they make dumb decisions based on their emotional attachments. And this guy is still very, very upset that mm -hmm. he was forced to trade away A.J. Brown and forced to draft a quarterback who plays a way he doesn't like. Trading away, like the best summary of the A.J. Brown trade from an Eagles fan is watching the live interview that Kelsey uh Jason Kelsey was doing when mm. they announced that they got AJ Brown and he just went nuts. That's that's the proof of it. Of how absurd they are. And honestly like depending how this draft goes is 100% going to determine their ranking in their division. So they're in the AFC South. So that's the Colts, Texans, Titans, and Jaguars for those of you playing along at home. As of right now, Jaguars are, in my opinion, the number one team in that division. Yeah, for the first time, there's actual clarity on who's the best team. Yeah. Where usually it was like a hodgepodge of like three teams. It was it was down to the wire this last off season. Uh, this last season, but. Jackson, like Jacksonville, has only seemed to grow, and Ridley is actually on the team this season. Shout mm -hmm. out to the first number zero, by the way. And oh my god. And the Colts and the Texans have potential to rebuild their team, well, or not? Col Texans rebuild, Colts enhance their team 
for some like with these picks. And I think that they're they're early enough, and I think the teams are smart enough to know what they need to enhance and to build around. Mm-hmm. I can't say the same about the Titans. Yeah, again, I think they're a team in denial who still thinks, who still has the wrong idea about what, who still has the wrong idea about, like, how good a team they are, who, if they had a window, it is closed, but they don't want to admit that, yeah. and they're going to keep playing a style of football that just doesn't work. They, I mean, look, after this year, it'll be much more affordable for them to get off Ryan Tannehill. So maybe all of this is just smoke and mirrors, and they're just going to gut it out this year and then figure out whatever they have to do to get a new quarterback. But yeah. until that proves out, I'm going to say that Mike Vrabel's lost his marbles. Yeah. And, like, if you look, if you look back at the last couple of seasons when A.J. Brown was on them, Tennessee led the division, but, like, I think A.J. Brown started in 2019, 2020, and Tennessee won the division both of those seasons. Right. Like, like come on. Come on, man. He's, you you, re, you got to realize you, you, done a, you made a boo-boo, right? I mean, theoretically, yes, but the NFL is run by, men, like, the people who get the most power in the NFL are men who confidently declare their right about things they've emphatically been proven wrong about. Yeah. Kind of, that's how John Gruden got to coach the Raiders. So it's like, oh man, I'll, I'll see them, maybe not next season, I'll see them maybe in two years. Right, I agree with that. Maybe then, maybe then they'll show up. Yeah, right now, they're another team that if I'm like, if I have to watch them on TV, I'll just read a book instead. Like, yeah. If I can't watch Red Zone and there's nothing else to watch. Like, if they're even on Red Zone, I'll probably just go to a different tab on my computer and do something different. Yeah, no. I'm not excited. I'm not excited to watch them. And their their best seasons are direct in recent couple years are directly related to when they had A.J. Brown. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, Julio Jones. Can't forget that. Oh yeah, God! That was I love the people were like that was such a steal. Why did they get Julio Jones? He is very washed, my dudes. Yeah, and and now they're in. Now that division's Jacksonville's game, so it's going to be a matter of where where does Tennessee think they can finish? Above right. above or below Houston and Indianapolis? Um, no, I'm not going to say. No, they simply they still have too much top end talent to be around Houston. That's the problem, and that's the problem. Again, it's like they are stars and scrubs, but they do not nearly have enough stars to make it work. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, well, what the hell do we do with these stars? All right, do we trade them, or do we just get this help? Apparently, trade them. Evident. Because another rumor going around is that. They're gonna make another stupid trade to the Eagles and trade, uh, freaking D- Derrick Henry to them. That's he's been attached to like three different people. Yeah, that's there's there's very like that's like a very loose rumor. There's not much fruition coming from it outside of just rumor mill stuff. But it's like, and Mister Vibrating Fruits uh brought it up. <laughs> so it's like. If if that happens, this trade like like if the Eagles use their number ten pick and end up with like Derrick Henry or something like that, how insane would that be? Again, it makes sense in the context of like maybe Derrick Henry or three years left, so let's go, and then worry about the consequences of everything we traded later. Yeah. All right, last team on the docket. The good old W team, Washington football team, because that, in my opinion, was the best name that they've had. It's it's the perfect Dan Snyder thing. It's, a petty, passive-aggressive man is finally forced to change his team's racist name, so he just throws up his arms and says, well, they're not going to have a name. I'll, uh, <laughs> remind me to send you the link of a video I, um, I watched the other night where the guy was talking about, he's like, what every team needs, kind of like what we've been doing. 
and mm -hmm. uh, we started recording this before I watched this video, so ha. Um, I'm going to claim we did it first. And he's just like, what does Washington need? Honestly, they got rid of Dan Snyder, so they're sitting pretty now. It is amazing when you look at their offseason and you realize, like, they've really done nothing. No. And it really is just a oh, different yes, atmosphere. Because they've been, yeah, they've been desperately trying to get a new owner in as quickly as possible. And Dan Snyder, petty bitch that he is, mm -hmm. refuses to spend any more money on this organization as he's being shoved out the door. Yep. Like, literally, they, they, they declined, they missed the window to pick up Chase Young's fifth option. And people are like, did you decline it or did you literally just miss it? Because it's like, you know, there's a difference. The room and it's like, yeah, it's like, is there anyone here to notarize this? And yeah. there's no one with the right authority to notarize it. So the squeaky voice team from option. The Simpsons is asking for a signature, and nobody's there I to give them a signature. Mr. Sullivan, can I please have a signature? Um, exactly. That's exactly um, what happened. Yeah, it's like every question you have about this team can be answered by uh, they've been trying to sell this team for seven months now. Yeah. So let's get back on to the episode. Quarterbacks, Jacoby Brissett or Sam Howell? Uh, well, I actually have a hot take. I'll save the hot take for later. Um, I will not be tricked into believing Sam Howell is seemingly a good quarterback. I will not. You cannot make me. Honestly, I, I, me. I've been tricked, honestly. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I'm going to throw basically everyone other than maybe into this group from last year's draft class. Desmond Ritter? No. Sam Howell? No. Kenny Pickett? Well, eh, he's fine. But, like, you're not going to convince me he's a great quarterback. Mm -hmm. So I would say just go with Jacoby Brissett because at the end of the day, like, here's my hot take about the Browns last year. Hit me. If I just played with Co Jacoby Brissett the whole year and didn't have Deshaun Watson, he probably could have made the playoffs. Like, he was just confident enough to lift mm -hmm. that ship. Yeah. Like, every game they lost, like, post-Watson, every game they lost was largely because the quarterback was bad. And Jacoby Brissett's not good necessarily, but he's not bad. Yeah, he's he's in that he's in that not good, not bad field. Like, yeah, not the guy, but not the wrong choice. And right. I think I think they're they're possibly being built to be a solid team. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, that's what's frustrating. That's what's frustrating about the Dan Snyder thing. This team has simply too much talent to be like sucked into this black hole that is that yeah. piece of garbage yeah now that he's off the team off the team uh just i think they just need to build up their defense a little bit their their offense is their, their offense is pretty solid and like i honestly would have gutted it out with carson wentz for another year if anything because again it's like you have just enough on offense that carson wentz will make like three or four plays uh, to create the like to uh, you know to, to 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 keep the ship afloat but also like you won't be great enough that if you find a quarterback prospect you like you can't draft him yeah that's sure too I can agree to that also I mean I feel like you can argue with who they have now while they probably won't draft a quarterback if they draft a quarterback it's not going to be a surprise Right. Well, my hot take is wait till after the draft once, you know, you're officially locked in with your new owner. If there's one team that could actually completely justify going for Lamar Jackson, it would be the Washington Hoop Bops, which is what I'm going to call them now, I decided. He, um, he, because, Lamar wouldn't even have to move. Right. It would literally be right next door. Here's the thing. because This is good for two reasons. One, because before there were the Baltimore Ravens, before there were, like, the Atlanta Falcons, before there were all these teams in sort of the southeast corner of the United States, sort of the Chesapeake, Atlantic, sort of re South Atlantic region, there was the Washington football team. And they, like, people forget how big a team that was. They were, like, one of the premier franchises in the league mm -hmm. who have slowly been run into a ditch by a charlatan who isn't even rich. That's the funny thing. So much, many of the problems, like he was stealing money from the franchise because he was cash poor. Yeah. You know, a guy like Donald Trump who has a lot of theoretical dollars, but if you actually follow those theories, you're like, oh, he doesn't actually have this money. So the dude was just stealing from the company and stealing from his fellow owners, which is finally why they gave up trying to protect him. 
Um, but yeah, so like that immediately gives you prestige and clout to sort of win back all the fans you lost. Um, do you know, like, so with the XFL, apparently yes. there's a Washington team and people will go yes, to the game. And the Washington chant, Defenders. Yes. Like they won't even watch the game. They'll just chant. All right. So a little inside baseball for the personal lives. Uh, when the XFL first started again, first off, huge fan of the XFL. I love how it was a stupid prospect by Vince McMahon that got passed down to the rock, but that's a, that's for another discussion. Um, and I used a, I used a randomizer to um, pick which team I rooted for because there was no there was no Philly team, and I had the randomizer got the Seattle Sea Dragons. And for those in the football group chat, I've been on the Sea Dragons board the entire time of the season, and they've been they've been killing it in the last end. I even have a sea I have a Sea Dragons beanie right next to me. Fun fact. Um, so like. The the Washington or the DC Defenders, which is Washington's team, is the most rowdy bunch of fans. They, on more than one occasion, have created sections long beer snakes of empty beer glasses. That's hilarious. They they've chanted "fuck Dan Snyder." They're just so all over. They're it's like it's like that like right level of toxic where it's like if this was a like if this was an nfl team everybody would hate them but because it's the xfl team it's like yeah let them do their thing man (laughs) um also on washington probably my favorite last name on the entire league wild goose um yes oh uh, right finish my thought quickly um also, because it's like the problem with Lamar is none of the owners want because they believe he wants a fully guaranteed contract, and none of the owners want to break that seal because they're a little like click. They're worried, know? yeah. They're yeah. also worried. If a new owner comes in, yeah. If a new owner comes in, why the fuck do they care? They're not friends with any. They don't know any of these people. Like maybe they bump shoulders at like rich people things, but like that is the ultimate. Like there's always t- like especially in basketball which I probably follow just as much as the NBA or as the NFL. Nailed it. Like there's always this like new owner energy. Like for example, the um Phoenix Suns were thinking about trading for Kevin Durant but they didn't want to give up uh Mikel Bridges. The new owner comes in after the previous owners ousted and he's like, "What the fuck are we doing? We could get Kevin Durant. You're making this trade." Like new owners always want to make big splashy moves so they can flex and be like, "Look what I did." Mm-hmm. So the minute this guy signs the contracts, he's going to be like, yeah, why the hell would I not get the former MVP who's only like 26? That just seems yeah. like common sense. And whether it works out or not, again, it just brings a level like it is an immediate like culture cleanser for the entire franchise. Mm-hmm. No, I think. Yeah, I think this I think they got what would be the best thing for me. Ah, I lied. Uh, on also their long slap, uh, their long snapper is named Cheeseman. That's his last name. I'm an, uh, I'm gonna need them to go to the Eagles to get their jerseys. Um, but I think I think they got what the best possible thing for them was, and that's getting rid of Dan Snyder. So. This draft, they they've won this season. They, they've the draft, already won this draft. They can, they can either try and blow for more picks and just get enhancement. They can, they can use their picks wisely to find people to build around, or they can just be like, you know what, we're gonna pick some meh people. Maybe get like, maybe not be like, maybe have it be like this last season where it's like we're contending in the NFC East. We might not win it, but. We'll at least give, we'll give some heavy hits to the other teams in the division, humble them a little bit. Yeah, and we we send them home, and like we rebuild in a year or two. Like not really like a tanking kind of rebuild that Tampa's doing? Question mark. Just uh, like let some contracts run up and go. Where do we want to go from here? Yeah. Honestly, they could be a team that literally misses every... They let the clock run out and just keep kicking it down, and it would still be considered a victory. Mm-hmm. 
And this winner of a team uh, is our final team. We've done it. We've gone over every quarterback. Da, 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 da. Every quarterback, every team, and we're going to... We'll be talking later tonight about if anyone makes a dumb choice or not. Yes, uh, follow follow Kevin's uh, Twitch as he plays yep. some game. I'm not sure if he's committed to one and talks about the draft, which occasional pop-ins from all your favorite cast pod friends, including me, <laughs> as I occasionally chime in on picks that I think are interesting or bad. Yeah. And when the Buffalo Bills inevitably draft another goddamn defensive lineman for like the seventh straight year or <laughs> trade down, you can hear me yell about that. Yep, they're... Um, I'm at least doing the first round. Like I'm gonna sit through that, and there's like those top ten picks before the Eagles' first pick, and then honestly, there, with the exception of like Washington, Pittsburgh, Detroit, like number eighteen pick, um, Tampa, Seattle, like I'll be pretty invested in seeing what what like what moves are going to be made. So I'm going to try and have it, try and have the stream going for, go for a nice long stream, grab a beer, join me. Why not? And we'll, Ooh. we'll talk and we'll talk and see, see, see who that number one pick is, is if it's Bryce Young or not. See if Houston blows it with picking either CJ Stroud. Cause, uh, rumor mill stuff and people are clearly looking like they're like yeah he got hit with like uh here's like these random test scores that he did badly on it's just like and it's like huh it's the night before the draft and they're just releasing this stuff they they do they do this all the time where it's like you want to make someone look bad you're gonna release the release random crap about him and justin fields had processing issues that we only found out about after his multiple years in college yeah no and that's that's so exactly it too like three pro days um where it's just like it's after all this like it's not even like you think he can get through for, like a couple years of college and all this stuff and then it's just like oh we just discovered this he's been hiding it or this college oh, kid's just course. like what <laughs> Like, were you polling my mom and you didn't, and I just didn't tell her I did bad on this test? Like, right, right. Is, is that, is that, was that your original source? Like, so, but that's honestly a scare tactic that works of you turn somebody off of a person and then oh, they can, they can drop a couple of rankings and make it an easier pick for someone in the later game. Yeah, I literally have no idea what's for the most part. And that's kind of exciting. Like, it's nice to be surprised for a change when mm -hmm. the last few drafts have been very, like, mapped out in advance. Yeah. No, I'm excited. I'm excited to see um, which quarterbacks go when. I'm curious of what Arizona is going to do. I'm curious what the Seahawks... I'm, gonna... I'm curious what the Seahawks are going to do in a different kind of light of... Arizona, it's gonna be what like I'm gonna be like ah, did you just blow it? And the Seahawks is gonna be like, all right, what do you, what do you see about this that I don't see? And then who will the Eagles take at number ten? That's that's gonna be my that's the pick I'm most excited for. Right, right, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> so catch us later tonight, or catch me later tonight streaming both. Probably Pokemon and the NFL draft. I'm going to try and figure out what the best way to do it all at once is. And Carter will be weighing in too. And Cal might be weighing in on Pokemon. Who knows? He hasn't been heard of for <laughs> this series. But, but until then... Send us home, Carter. Thank you guys for listening to this series. We had a lot of fun doing it. Um, make sure you like all of our socials and our Twitch channel. And... Look out for yourselves on draft night. Have a beer, have some friends, have some wings, have a good time. <laughs>